Well, hello, welcome back. Today we are going to have a look at uh, something interesting. So, to keep it, uh, not to keep you waiting very much, it's about a new heater from Eberspeher. And uh, yeah, it's a new generation of electronics. And uh, yeah, I haven't tested it yet. It's here, so I uh, I thought about making a comparison between uh, all the generation of electronics available now on the market. Okay, uh, maybe this is a little bit confusing, and uh, it will be for a time until at least one of uh, the generations will be out of the market and I believe uh, we will not have to wait too much for this to happen. And the reasons uh, are more or less uh, obvious to us, at least. So from left to right we have Airtronic, first generation, the one we all know and this is uh, what we will find almost uh, nowadays in our in the installations and uh, repair them and so on so everybody knows this heater we have airtronic 2 uh, this is not such a widespread heater it has been used a lot on euro in europe at least by poland and uh, i don't know Aust austria we here in Romania we didn't sell so much these heaters because uh, it's uh, really hard to get people to buy something new when they are used to something that works already really good, they know the installations, uh, they know how to repair them and so on, making a step into the future, so these are around from about year 2000, 2001, I think it's the first time when uh, electronics were released. Of course, uh, in 2007, there was a change in the electronics of the first uh, generation. From Werle, it, uh, Hela became the major uh, producer of electronics for Eberspeyer with a second generation this was changed and now this this one already has uh, an ECU an electronics produced by Eberspeyer and of course the third generation also and you know how it how it is so you are depending a lot of a lot of time on your uh, on your suppliers and sometimes suppliers can have problems and then you have problems also so the step they are taking is logical let's move everything uh, in-house and yeah what we can do in-house we are not reliant on supply on suppliers so Okay, uh, let's get on with it. I will just uh, take a look. Let's take a look real quickly from outside. From outside, bef between Airtronic 1 and 2, almost no difference. I mean, no, not almost. It's actually no difference from the outside. Only difference is the connector. Yeah. And now we have the third generation. This doesn't have electronic written anymore here. Also, the case looks a little bit different. It has all these kinds of uh, patterns on it and the label. It has the flow direction. Yeah. And this is good because sometimes, uh, sometimes people uh, were mounting the heaters like this. And uh, it was very hard to know sometimes uh, which 
in which direction the air is uh, going and there was a rule when you see the logo upside down that is the good mounting position and uh, this was important for these heaters because uh, you you could not have them like this yeah you had to have the fuel pipe pointing on the top yeah okay and as you know with this one with this uh, little bit of change this design is now they say protected because if you take a look at the chinese market this is the most copied uh, heater in the world so everybody copied this heater who is making them now and selling them in china or uh, whatever so this is the most copied heater in the world and they had to change something to look a little bit different but uh, it's not really important what's on the outside it's more important what's in the inside okay so let's go from left to right i will take down this just so i can open the heater easier i will take down the gasket these two gaskets uh, seem to be the same the part numbers yeah are the same so these two are the same even this from electronic too feels a little bit different but whatever and the third generation now this is already different so this is also a new part okay now let's take down the the top half casing and uh, in this way we can have a better look of what's inside doesn't really matter these plastics are all the same just keeping track not to get the serial numbers mixed up and the model numbers of course we will get out second generation first let's take this out also yeah okay uh, let's keep this here Actually, this is the first generation, this is the second. And now, let's uh, go to the third. Now, actually, these clips are a little bit different. Now, let's open this up also. We cannot mix those up because clearly they are different. I see they open in the same manner. So from the outside, except from those little things on the case, it's uh, not really much difference. Yeah, these clips are a little bit different also, but pretty much the same. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I will take this apart today. These two not, I've done this a thousand times. Uh, you can see them in my videos I also have a video where I take apart the second generation so I will not do that today but this one I never took it uh, apart and actually I never tested it so we will go also outside on the test bench and we will compare the first and the third generation I will try to make a recording in the same conditions to see if there are um, sound differences is the unit uh, quieter and so on okay so what's the first thing we see that now right also from the top i hope you can see all all these heaters here yeah so let's take it from the top which is obvious okay so the controllers the ecus are different the position of the glow plug in this the first two generations are the same and this one is different okay the overheat sensor 
it's yet again different or at least the cables are different but it's pretty much the same idea as the second generation this one comes down with a clip you take out the clip and the sensor comes down on this ones i see they are fixed in a different manner and uh, it's a little bit harder for this to to demount them and also there is a tool to mount them but you can see that uh, in the electronic 2 video okay let's get on other differences yeah i can see the shapes here on the heat exchanger now this these are gone on this one on the new one and they say they have optimized somehow a little bit further the airflow on this heater so probably this this is why these are not present anymore okay i think i say too much okay well next let's take a look at the blowers oh sorry it's making all kind of noises yes so clearly this is an old type brushed, mot brushed motor it's old generation everybody knows after a while this, uh, these fans die and you have to change them usually around 3000 hours but i have seen i have seen them fail uh, over and under that so it's not really a, a rule there but uh, usually they should last about 3000 hours of uh, working time the second generation came with brushless motors and this is the case also for the third generation so these are uh, somehow calculated to 5000 working hours at least okay now what the interesting thing is to me when the electronic 2 came out they said that uh, this b component fan blade does help with the noise but now on the third generation we have seen it gone so this there is a rubber like material here which probably reduces some of the vibrations at least in this model that was the case and now we can see the blade is again monocomponent what can we think about this it was not working or i don't know anyway we can see they gone back to the mono component uh, version maybe some costs i don't know okay let's see from uh, the bottom again the ecu is different different connections now we have a connector here oh yeah this is a bigger difference maybe than, uh, than the fan blade itself so these sensors are used to control the temperature inside the cabin when uh, an external sensor is not mounted over the years Ewospeher has uh, done things but really didn't address this issue we can see on the first generation the sensor is here on the second generation pretty much in the same place in the third generation they have changed something and they have made a sensor that it's mounted to a different place as you can see and it's separate from the sorry from the ecu so you could take this out and i believe this was never a spare part in this one is obvious but not even here so this sensor was not available as a spare part but 
if I can see now correctly, this is connected in the same connector as the overheat sensor. So, as a uh, spare pot goes, I think this uh, will be, it will come together. It's probably a price increase for this one, but at least we can change this sensor, which we couldn't on uh, these ECUs. But then again, it, it wasn't really a problem. You know why? Because when you connected an outside sensor, the heater will uh, not care about this one anymore so yeah this is how they did it and they say that in this way the airflow um, and the temperature is con the temperature sensor it's way more it's better aligned in the airflow and the control of the temperature is more precise than it was before yeah, so let's believe them that it's that it's like that. Okay, so let's uh, start taking apart the heater and uh, let's see what else is new here. Okay, so this one is a Torx. Let me just get the tool here. Let's try to take down the ECU. I will move this a little bit apart, aside, and uh, we will fo focus on this one. I can see the shape of the ECU is uh, somehow similar to Airtronic 2. Yeah. Will it stay like that? Let's hope so. Okay, so the shape is similar. The fixing points look to be the same. And uh, also the fan connection to the ECU, even from the second generation, is directly with some pins, not with this cable as in the first generation. Okay, so I expect here to be the same, yeah, the connection is the same, also the ECU has a ground wire here. Now this is just fine, let's see if we can disconnect all these wires. Now with this sensor, is it just, well it's coming out, oh my god, yeah. We'll get there in a minute. This come out so hard. Already we are fixed. This one you have to push from. And it won't come out. Okay, so I heard the click here. Okay, so this is the glow plug, I think, yeah, and the main, the main supply. I can see the terminals here, and it will be a surprise if I can take them out with these tools, but I think not. There are some kind of different terminals here. Okay, and this one should come out like this, doesn't it? Okay, so it's out. Well, what can I say? So the dimension of these pins is, is crazy. So they are such uh, thin, I can barely see them, I don't know if you can see the pins inside, this is crazy. So everything is moving to, to smaller components now, 
you can see. And this is why I think nobody in a workshop has tools to change these uh, pins. It could be that the connector can be opened, I think, but I don't know how the pins are fixed inside, so I will not mess with that. I will try to take out this sensor. Now is this the way it should come out? Maybe this is one way. I think it should come out with everything. Anyway, we will leave it like that for now. So the temperature sensor, overheat sensor and the glow plug. Obviously, the glow plug should be a spare part. I don't know how you can get these pins out. But probably a lot easier than the other ones. Okay, I will not try that. We will see if we will have our, our first repair. Now this is interesting, one of the pins is lower. I wonder why that is. These are actually on the same level. Well, who knows, maybe we have a defective heater? I don't think so. I don't really understand why they are not in the same level. Whatever. Okay, let's go on. Let's remove the blower. Well, the blower is one, two, three, four, three, three screws. It's another way to make a cost-effective heater, remove the screws. The other one has four, the first generation has four screws. The second generation, I don't know how many. Okay, so let's take this apart. Now from the presentations, I know it should have a new burning chamber, a different type. Okay, this is the last one. Let's see how everything is uh, sold inside here. Okay, so there is a gasket, a rubber gasket. We can see the burning chamber immediately. This one is uh, really silent. Everything looks balanced. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, that different from the second generation, except uh, the fixing points and physically it's, an, uh, it's another blower, but I think the electronics inside are the same. Okay. Now let's move on. So there is a gasket here, which I see it goes in a lot of parts. So it goes around where the blower is, it's going to the bottom where the fuel pipe is. Yes, and it's also around the fuel pipe here. Okay, let's see, uh, I think we should take out the glow plug first, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take out this rubber piece. I can't say it's easy. Well, it should come out anytime now. 
but it's not. I don't really understand why. Okay, so we took out the rubber and I think, yeah, the glow plug just slides out of there. Okay, so this is that. Yeah, and it's connected to the harness, so pretty much I'm pretty sure this will be a spare part and you can change it. What I'm not liking is the quality of this uh, rubber. I don't really... I mean, I don't know what to say. And everything is mounted around the wires. Okay, so let's move on and let's take out the burner to see how it looks. Let's hope we do not break anything. Okay, I believe that's it, so it should come out together with this piece of rubber and it's out. I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to see what's, how it's mounted, so everything comes with this, now, I'm not sure if buying a new burner will also come with a gasket whatever okay and wow this is like a toy compared to the old one such a small burning chamber Really interesting to see. I know we had uh, there were problems with the old one when uh, different fuels were used. Let's hope it will not be the case. So just to make an idea, I will not open those heaters. I have here a burning chamber which is in the first and the second generation. And just to compare them, I mean, in every single way, this new one is much smaller. From every angle. Yeah. It's a different type of construction, so this one actually almost fits in the old one. Yes. And uh, another difference is it doesn't have that screen from the glow plug anymore. So there were there was a screen here, and there is in the old models. And actually, sometimes this was dirty, and uh, you can you could get away with only changing this screen, and the heater will work fine again. Now in this one, there is no such thing. There is a fine. Uh, screen or mesh at the back of the burning chamber maybe you can see it and this is yeah almost like a hydronic three burning chamber looks uh, well the technology technology is similar what's inside here i'm curious but i don't think there are any changeable parts here Nah, everything is welded, it's fixed together, so it is as it is. Well, I think this is the biggest uh, news here. 
a new burning chamber because from a lot of years we have this one on electronics the similar in the bigger electronics is the same with the four kilowatts ones and so on yes here we have the same type of gasket I believe it's pretty much the same material as the older ones and the space inside the heat exchanger is a lot smaller so yeah everything is redesigned so the fins are are uh, a lot bigger because the inside it's a lot smaller and I didn't notice this you can't really tell like this but I'm pretty sure at least inside or maybe this these fins are longer yeah it could be that this one are and this is why I'm having the illusion that that this one are longer but no I think this one are longer and uh, the space inside the heat exchanger it's smaller somehow well anyway this is it so you have seen now what's new every day uh, companies are trying to improve their products make them more cost effective so they can uh, they can be competitive on the market and now you know it's really hard with all these Chinese copies coming in but this is the way to go new electronics, new everything a better construction, longer life yeah, could be that this will be good selling points okay this will all also be available in gasoline versions even 2 kilowatts 4 kilowatts and they will also have 6 and 8 kilowatts heaters air heaters through 6 through 8 kilowatts not just boost mode or something similar so i'm pretty excited about them and i can't wait to see one of them here yeah we don't have them now but I don't think they are even available for sale yet so okay next thing we will go outside we will put the first generation and the third generation on the test bench and we will compare how it's sounding how it's working and so on some advantages of course brushless motor stepless heating also uh, this sensor is used now for starting the heater so if the if this sensor reads a higher temperature than the ambient then uh, the glow time will not be so long and this will save energy because as you know the biggest consumption for this heater is when the heater is starting and the glow plug is activated so they are trying to solve a lot of things from electronics and software and so on rechanging some logics and also also now i remember that this sensor is very important for the heating capacity regulation when the heater is close to the set point so this will read the set point more accurately than this one here and in this way the heater can work at the lowest power for uh, more time and this is uh, important because the lower power the heater can work uh, the less restarts it does need yeah okay and every restart it's away from the battery okay guys so we will compare these two because in my opinion the second generation was just uh, not a bridge i think something uh, just um, uh, 
temporary until the new heater came out. This was so Airtronic 2000, roughly. This one was uh, released 2018, and just three years after that, we have uh, the Airtronic 3 in 2021. Okay, I will put everything back together. We will. S I will see you outside and uh, test the two heaters. Okay, guys, so we are out in the here in the workshop and uh, we will try to do a test between the two heaters. So how I set this up, I have exactly 300 millimeters from the heater and uh, this is what I will uh, do on the first generation also. So we will start it up and uh, I don't know, I, I wish it would be a quieter place but uh, we are close to the road here and uh, I can hear cars driving by, also some dogs barking and so on. So uh, I don't know how conclusive this will be, but I hope you can uh, get an idea. So both videos will be at the same gain level and so on. I will try to make this as accurate as I can here. Okay. As a new th as a new thing also for the electronic 2 and 3 the fuel pump should be really silent to the point that you can't hear it so let's see if this is true and uh, yeah let's see if there is really a big difference between the two heaters
Okay guys, so there you have it. Uh, I, I also uh, want to see the video to compare the two noises because when starting two heaters side by side you cannot uh, really tell if you start them at the same time then again it's not uh, really relevant so I hope that this video can also share a little bit of light in my case to see exactly what's the difference now what you can hear is the electronic one still cooling down but there's a little uh, bit of interesting thing that I found on the electronic 3 so uh, and this is starting after warm starting so starting after the heater was working for a while it stopped let's say it reached the temperature and then when it's starting again and the the heat exchanger is still a little bit warm so let's see what happens and this was really interesting so i will just try to start the heater with long press okay so the fan went okay now the fan is going again let's see what the heater is doing I think it's just checking the fan. Okay, so the other heater stopped. Now the electronic one, when it's starting, the fan will uh, work all the time. So I don't know what the logic is here. Maybe it's sampling the air a little bit. Maybe it's checking the temperatures. And now you see, this is what, what I wanted to show you guys. As soon as everything is checked, the fan is starting, the pump is starting also, so instantly, just after a few things, I don't know exactly what the heater is doing, yeah, and it's already working uh, really fast, so this is quite interesting, and uh, now that i done this uh, video in this time, I, I saw that the electronic 3 takes about 2 minutes less to get to the full power than the electronic 1 as you can see it's, it's just started and it's uh, almost working at full power well, maybe now it's a little bit noisier because I took down the cover from the back and you can't believe it but this makes a huge difference yeah maybe you could hear it now so this is the thing so I think a lot of logic has changed here so let's try to take it closer to the temperature so we have 21 degrees here let's say okay let's say 21 let's see what the heater is doing if we set it to okay, we still have 20 degrees now. Of course, I could have done this by moving the this temperature sensor closer to the heat. Still saying 20 degrees. I don't know what kind of delays are in the sensor. Okay. Yeah. So it went to 28 degrees. Uh, 30 degrees. I didn't want this. I wanted for the heater to face down a little bit. I'm not sure it will stop. Let's put it here to pull a little bit of cold air. Yeah, so I done it, I heat it up. Yeah, the fuel pump stopped. 
So I'm pretty sure the heater will stop right now. I just wanted it to work a little bit in uh, in low power mode. Okay, let's say 33. Now it's 33, 33. The set point is 33. The measure temperature is 33. So the heater stopped from phasing down. I can somehow now hear the fan going up. Yeah, of course now it registers 30 degrees. So the fuel pump should start any minute. But anyway, I would say the response time is faster, the heater is working better, of course, stepless power is a large improvement compared to four steps as the electronic one. So the heater can regulate its uh, heating capacity exactly to the, the one we need and in this way it's uh, way more efficient. Okay guys, I think this is it, I will stop the heater now. I uh, will thank you all for watching, I hope you learned something about this new heater, how reliable they will be, only time will tell, but now Ebespeha has quite some years of experience in the field, so uh, there should not really be any surprises. The only problems that I'm thinking could be only with electronics and mainly software. The hardware looks fine. It, uh, the burners, I think, are tested before put in the market. Also, the concept is tested already on Hydronic 3, and uh, we have never changed the burner on those. So I think this will be okay. Okay, guys. Uh, I know I talk too much, so let's end this video, thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos, and uh, I will try to keep you up to date with everything that's uh, new in Ebbasperger, and also with our heaters, okay guys, thank you very much, see you next time, bye bye.